Hello and welcome to my second presentation. In my earlier presentation, I gave you a rudimentary introduction to this book, The Mayor of Custer Beach, written by Thomas Hardy. This is the first slide of my presentation. There are just two points, the story of a working man and sale of wife. Thomas Hardy's The Mayor of Castor Bridge was published in 1880s and like many other books of Victorian era, this book too was published in serialized form. Serialized form means it was uh, published in installments in magazines and journals because that was the culture of the day and readers often were anxiously waiting for every installment and that actually enhanced their appetite for more and more such chapters and more and more uh, elaborations on the on any story so, by and large all the victorian successful victorian writers wrote their stories this way and when they completed their stories they would the publisher would uh, actually publish those stories in the form of novels in one volume or in multiple volumes uh, <clears throat> like many other novels this novel the mayor of castlebridge uh, is, is a long one, it is divided into 45 chapters and uh, it is the setting is Wessex as I have said in my previous presentation, Wessex and good number of books or the novels of Thomas Hardy together are called Wessex novels. Wessex novels are, are those books whose setting is Wessex that is South Western England, mainly the county Dorset and small towns here in this book, the Castle Bridge is nothing but the main town of the of the of, of, of the county, that is, Dorchester. And Thomas Hardy had always a soft corner for this part of the land, Dorset. Uh, he never he was never comfortable elsewhere. The setting, again, like many other stories, uh, is is Dorset. In the first slide, in the first chapter, that is, first chapter. Uh, the story opens with a hay trusser, H A Y hay trusser, T R U S S E R, an agricultural laborer. Henchard, Michael Henchard is the is the protagonist, and he is the is he is the agricultural laborer who is walking the road toward Castlebridge, and he is being accompanied here by his wife Susan, who is carrying their baby girl. So. The story is of a working man, of course it is, uh, Michael Henchard is, is trying out his luck uh, everywhere. He is out of job and therefore he is looking for some kind of job. If I can read the first portion of the novel, the first paragraph, it goes like this. One evening of late summer before the 19th century had reached one third of its span, a young man and a woman, the latter carrying a child, were approaching the large village of Waden Priors in Upper Wessex on foot. They were plainly but not ill clad, though the thick hoe of dust which had accumulated on their shoes and garments from an obviously long journey lent a disadvantageous shabbiness to their appearance just now. This is how the novel opens. Uh, it takes talk, to, of course, talks about Michael Henchard and his wife. They were they were shabbily dressed all right, but they were, they were plainly dressed all right, but they were not wearing anything uh, very cheap. Michael Henchard, of course, uh, if you have watched the movie, of course, the movies certainly do not always match the, the story, but uh, he is, this is, the first chapter is all about this. And the next part is sale of his wife. That is this next point. I mean, when Michael Henchard and his wife Susan come to a camp uh, where all the other agricultural people were congregating, uh, that is the place where Michael Henchard uh, and his wife end up. And they were hungry and therefore they were taking food, they were taking drinks. Michael Henchard took Formity, F U R M I T Y, Formity, uh, a kind of uh, drink with some other alcoholic uh, concoction which resulted into a kind of super intoxication uh, you know of michael henchard i mean people do drink 
but people sometimes uh, very seldom behave uh, quite improperly and that is uh, something which here happens with Michael Hencher when he drinks too much and in that intoxicated state of mind in, in, in an abbreviated condition of his senses he sells off his wife he auctions he just you know he asks for more and more higher and higher bids uh, and uh, just for few guineas he ultimately sells his wife Susan who was carrying who was just holding a, a baby child carrying a child doesn't mean carrying a child in her womb but in her arms now who who finally bought the wife there is a man Newson Richard Newson who who's a sailor in this story who comes up and of accepts the offer of Michael Henchard who pays the money to Michael Henchard and takes away Susan and the little babe this is roughly the first chapter of the novel and this is terrible I mean when you when you read the first chapter you do not want to believe that how can one possibly sell one's wife and how is it even legitimized in any society uh, but uh, you see uh, if you if you read the records of uh, of Dorset or if if um, I mean the author author Thomas Hardy uh, studied the records and he came came across such facts selling of wives was not was rare but not entirely absent in social practices so therefore it is not entirely fictitious every event cannot be uh, fiction or just um, figment of the writer's imagination uh, it was somehow or the other sometimes or the other it was it was done it was practiced in in those cultures or in many cultures in fact so Michael Henchard in the first chapter this is the first chapter he once again he is out for a for a, for a job he is accompanied by his wife and child and the poor fellow uh, eventually uh, ends up selling his wife the next morning when he wakes up he he understands his mistake but by the time it was too late so this is actually remember this is the one mistake that he does and perhaps the greatest mistake uh, done by Michael Hinchard in his life for which he he actually ruins his life later on as the as the story unfolds and it rolls on we'll find out uh, this this the remorse the repentance the regret for one singular act in Michael Hinchard's life you know leaves leaves him absolutely shattered, shattered. Uh, the, I mean, the scars are born for, for decades but by and large we need to remember that the first chapter is all about this Michael Hinchard who is uh, who of course a self-made man but who who is out for a job and he is he he makes a mistake tremendous mistake and of course a crime too for which he is not punished by any court of law but he is punished afterwards in life this is the first chapter and very crucial chapter of course now the second chapter second chapter of the out of 45 chapters Henchard's repentance and oath what happens in the second chapter the second chapter when Michael Hincher comes back to his senses he understands that he has done a grave mistake I mean after all who can think of selling one's spouse Michael Hincher has done it and not just the wife but also the child is gone Michael Hincher uh, repents of course if there's a deep remorse which prompts him to take an oath what is the oath the oath is he tells himself that he will not touch drink for 21 years why has he cho chosen 21 because the time the, the 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 moment when the event most unwanted event occurs Michael Hencher is just 21 so he reserves 20 more 21 more years for this repentance and he promises to himself not to touch any alcoholic drink for as many years as he has lived so far on earth but it is too late and Michael Henchard only uh, takes takes this oath he, he cannot do anything else after all the job the deed is done 
and he will have to bear it. Uh, there is nothing to read from this uh, from this chapter. Let us come to our next or the third chapter. The third chapter is about Susan's search for Hencher after 18 years. This is wonderful. First chapter and second chapter are fine. We have no trouble whatsoever uh, in understanding that uh, that the story has taken a sharp turn already in the second two first two chapters. But in the third chapter, when we find this character once again, Susan, who is the wife, estranged wife, sold off wife of Michael Henchard, Susan's search for Henchard after 18 years. Third chapters, third chapter, here Susan comes back in the story with her grown up daughter. And where are they? What are they doing? Susan wants to look for Michael Hencher after 18 long years and she she doesn't have any address she doesn't have any phone number of course in those days phone numbers didn't exist Susan comes back to that place where he, she was estranged from her husband finally she comes to know that it could be it could be um, Castor Beach where Michael Hencher is residing right now and therefore he decides to take his her daughter sorry her daughter whose name is Elizabeth Jane Elizabeth Jane to Castor Bridge why to look for Michael Hencher now here I must tell you that Susan never mentions these events or these unfortunate occurrences to her daughter Elizabeth she doesn't know anything about it and uh, Susan only tells her that she is looking for an old uh, kin of her, own rel old relation of her, that is Michael Henchard in Gaston Bridge. And that's it. Uh, she, she doesn't tell her that Michael Henchard is actually the man who was her husband and who was, who was guilty of selling, of auctioning her off to a stranger. So it's a peculiar kind of story uh, in the third chapter and Susan after a long ride from here from there what with her daughter finally reaches Castor Beach uh, if I can read the first few lines the high high road into the village of Waden Priors Waden Priors is, is actually a fict fictitious name of another small town in Dorset uh, the high road into the village of Waden Priors was again carpeted with dust the trees had put on as of yore their aspect of dingy green and where the hundred hinchard family of, of three had once walked along. Two persons not unconnected with that family walked now. Now the same roads uh, which were trodden by three members of the same family are now being trodden by two. This is, you know, Thomas Hardy's stories are full of surprises. These are the stories which uh, are uh, full of surprises. A reader is surprised every now and then. Uh, this is a dramatic moment uh, when Susan Susan comes uh, in search of her estranged, uh, her divorced husband, not in the legal terms of course, Michael Henshaw. So this is a dramatic moment and they finally reach Castle Bridge. <coughs> In chapter 3, in chapter 3, Henchard's rise in life. Now, Henchard, Henchard needs to be described here, of course, uh, because Michael Henchard is the prime character of the story. Michael Henchard, what has he been doing all these years? Michael Henchard, now, after so many years, after 21 years of his previous mistake, is now a very successful man in Castor Bridge. He is a trader. He is a trader in uh, mainly corn, roots and uh, uh, many other grains etc. Wheat and not only that he has also been elected the mayor of the small town Castor Bridge and therefore he is a very respected man. He is a very respected man and he often holds meetings etc. So the author uh, you know, describes him in that way 
that how, how how successful he is Michael Hinchard in his life and he is a self-made man of course but later on we see that Hinchard also faces few troubles in his life uh, he is a good merchant he has a very good eye for the crops wheat and other um, produce agricultural produce now remember that Dorset is an agricultural or agri agrarian town, uh, Dorchester, I beg your pardon. The entire Dorset county is or was agrarian, it's still by and large in 20th century agrarian. Um, industrial revolution was only uh, making a very slow progress in that part of uh, Britain. And most of the, most of the areas are all dwelled by people who were occupied somehow or the other in agriculture and and this this uh, has a great uh, imp impression or impress I, I should say on all the stories of Michael Hencher uh, sorry of, of Thomas Hardy Thomas Hardy's characters are by and large all rude so here the protagonist is also not a man from a city like Manchester or or London or Birmingham but he is from Dorset he is successful, but he is successful only in agricultural trade. Michael Henchard's Michael Henchard has bought, you know, some some corns, but which which are not of good quality, and he, he is facing trouble with his with his buyers. Buyers are also complaining to Michael Henchard. They are saying, "What kind of uh, materials have you supplied?" Michael Henchard doesn't have any answer, and Michael Henchard doesn't know how to sort out this trouble. Uh, of this uh, inferior quality of, of his food grains and this is the trouble he's facing he's holding meetings with others <coughs> he doesn't know how to overcome it then uh, at a very crucial juncture of the story we find one character and that is a Scotchman his name is Farfrae. Farfrae uh, is a character who has come all the way from Scotland. He is, <coughs> I beg your pardon, <coughs> who has come uh, all the way from Scotland and he is also looking for a job or some kind of settlement in his life. But Michael, uh, but Farfrae is going to America because he has been told that in America they are they are coming up with new devices new equipment in agriculture and and far from things that he he has got some skills in uh, agricultural machinery and therefore he he wants to go to bristol from bristol he wants to sail <coughs> to america and before that he has come to Casterbridge, and almost uh, by by you can say by a stroke of chance or luck he uh, he comes across uh, michael henchel so there is a meeting <clears throat> there is a meeting between the mayor, Michael Henchard, and Farfrae. And here we see Michael Henchard, uh, when Michael Henchard comes to know that, that Farfrae uh, has got some talent. Uh, he also understands the accounts, he, he, he can uh, you know, keep books, etc. And he's a fairly literate man. Michael Henchard wants to employ him in his business. But Farfrae says that, no, 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 I don't need your job, I have got some other plans. And Farfrae seems to be a kind of, you know, a man of his own convictions. He doesn't just accept any offer that comes his way. Uh, but finally, Michael Hinchard uh, you know, succeeds to, to convince him. <clears throat> and he is appointed. And here, at this point, we need to remember that Susan, her daughter, are also staying at the same a hotel where uh, where Michael uh, where Farfrae is staying, and Susan not only notices Michael Henchard, who is now grey-haired, who is far older, because it is after all, uh, you know, 18 years um, uh, later that Susan finds her husband, and Susan and Elizabeth Jane also also notice Farfrae. Now here I must tell you that uh, Elizabeth Jane, the young girl of 18 uh, from the first sight of Farfrae begins to like him 
uh, begins to like him, which that 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 liking turns into a deep love and <coughs> eventually ends up in marriage later on. <coughs> so the Scotchman who meets Michael Henchard and Michael Henchard employs him. But actually, before the employment, Michael Henchard advertised for his position, and there was another man, Joshua Job, who who came up to Michael Henchard for the job, and he was told immediately by Michael, Michael Henchard that look, you are late. The job has already been given to somebody else. That is, that is far from. As I have said, that Susan and and her daughter Elizabeth Jane are in the same <coughs> same uh, inn, and Susan and Elizabeth uh, notice notice him. The mayor comes to meet Farfrey at the inn, etc. Uh, but the Scotchman, as I have said, uh, though he refused the offer, he eventually accepts uh, the offer, and this is the this is another. Uh, you can see a kind of turning point in the story, uh, because by accepting the offer of Michael Henchard, Farfrae, uh, you know, finds a foothold in his life in the, in Casterbridge. And uh, later on, we will find out how things change and how dramatically the <coughs> relationship between Michael Henchard and Farfrae uh, deteriorates. Now, in the next chapter, Farfrae, Farfrae also hums a few lines which, which are liked by Elizabeth Jane. Elizabeth Jane, as I have said, immediately uh, starts at, uh, having some soft corner for this Scotchman in her heart. And therefore, it just grows on and on. Next, we see another meeting between Michael Henchard and Farfrae. In fact, the next morning, uh, Henchard is passing through the street where Farfrae uh, has spent the night, and Henchard happens to look upwards at the window from which Farfrae is looking down. And noticing Farfrae in the window, Henchard asks him if he is going to leave the hotel now. Farfrae says that he is about to leave and uh, then Henchard waits for him while Farfrae picks up his bag and comes out into the street. So little by little uh, these things are changing, changing all in favour of Michael Henchard and his new recruit Farfrae. Next we see how Elizabeth Jane meets Henchard. Elizabeth Jane is a young girl. She, she wants to find out or, and explore this man and therefore she seeks an interview. She introduces herself to Michael Henchard and here in this slide we see uh, Michael Henchard and this young girl Elizabeth Jane. She tells him that her mother's name is Susan, father's name is Newson, and they are estranged, the father is dead. And immediately, Michael Henchard understands that this young girl is none other than his own blood, his own daughter, who has been missing in his life for 18 years. So Im immediately, his all fatherly feelings you know, uh, just rouse uh, with such sudden gush, and his life almost changed in a moment. This is another surprise uh, uh, that you know <coughs> uh, that, that that awaits the readers. This is this is there are many surprises and turns in Hardy's novels uh, immediately just by one one stroke, but but one chapter in one chapter by one one you can say one very tiny uh, event. Michael Henchard is now getting back his wife 
he is relieved and moreover when someone finds someone's daughter or, or, or son after so many years that there is there cannot be any any limit to one's joys and that is exactly what happens here in this chapter and Michael Henchard then later on we'll see how Michael Henchard <coughs> goes on little by little to uh, meet his desire to to keep his uh, lost wife and child so in my presentation this is my second pre presentation I have very very roughly uh, I have given you some idea of how the story has so far evolved in the first 10 chapters uh, we need to remember that in the third chapter from third chapter onward there is that there, there is a gap between the second and the third chapter there is a huge gap of 18 years but the that is how the story is over but very quickly uh, the protagonists meet one another the chief protagonist, of course, Michael Henchard, his wife and his daughter meet one another and they settle down in Casterbridge. They, they decide the future course of actions and how from now onward, things will change again little by little and we will see more characters coming up. Not too many, but few more uh, in this story uh, who will contribute to, to the story and the plot and how again by certain surprises by 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 some by some un unexpected and un unanticipated events the story can <clears throat> change better or for better or worse so thank you very much for you know, for your patience uh, in my next presentation i will uh, i will again uh, start from the next chapter onward and in next i hope next uh, two to three uh, presentations i shall be able to finish the story in brief and my efforts will be successful thank you very much for your